What's up, what's up, what's up? Do we have an episode for you today? This is our beef episode. We got to talk about hip hop's Royal Rumble. We were playing with y'all a little bit when we dropped last week's episode, the J. Cole episode, but we got to get into it. There's a lot that's happening. There's a lot of beef amidst. There's a lot of great bars. This is a cool moment for hip hop, and we got to talk about a lot of things, so we're going to get right to it because we got to talk about the best beat so far. We got to talk about the best overall song so far. Well, of course, we got to talk about what Drake said, Rick Ross song. Uh, there's some random moments. Definitely got to <laughs> definitely got to address some of these random moments. The current biggest loser, the current biggest winner. But before we get into this, because I'm actually gonna go straight into what I think, right? Uh, okay. Something I said before last episode uh -huh. that y'all y'all didn't understand. A lot of y'all didn't get it. But now I call BS because it's being made clear. Okay. I realize these people ain't strategic. That's all it is. Remember last episode where I said Kendrick Lamar was taking the L internally. Mm -hmm. Not that he took it took an L at all in terms of like people don't like him and, or think he's a loser. His bars aren't hard enough versus what J. Cole put out. Anything like that. I was saying he was taking an L because when J. Cole pulled out, that took away Kendrick Lamar's moment to be able to say, I took J. Cole and Drake at the same time. I took two out of the big three out. That's GOAT status. Mm -hmm. Remember that? And a lot of comments didn't quite understand what I was saying. And they were like, oh, no, you tripping, you bugging. But now you turn around, a lot of them same people who didn't understand what I was saying are now giving Drake credit, saying that Drake going against 20 dudes. Drake versus... Drake has no way to lose because he's taking 20 people, 10 people at the same time. That's all I was saying. It's the ability to say, yo, I was going me versus many. That's what Kendrick Lamar had for a second. Yeah. Drake now has that. Yeah. And yeah. it's almost hard for him to lose as long as he holds his own and gives strong bars. There's a lot of people confused. They don't even just look at it as him versus Kendrick. Everybody wants Drake versus Kendrick. Let me get this. Let me not get this confused, right? Because people are going to misconstrue that. That's what we all want. That's the main event. <laughs> However, this distraction is going to make Drake look better. There's, there's only a win coming from Drake out of this. Yeah, this basically this is basically Drake fighting the, the, the side quest characters on the way to the boss. You know what I'm saying? Hey. He racking up XP points right now. <laughs> 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 Trying to train, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Yo, this is a fact. This is a, this is that's exactly what <laughs> what it feels like at this point because Kendrick being quiet and it feels like forever. Like a week isn't that long, but when you have all this happen within that week, it starts to feel like dang, Kendrick been quiet for a minute because we didn't expect to get as much as we did. Just that's to be true, real. bro. It has only been like two weeks, and that, that's what pissed me off about Kendrick, bro. It's like he's just gonna come out, cause all this pandemonium, and just shut the fuck up. That's crazy, bro. That's kind of his M.O. period, though. I know, but that's even what J. Cole was talking about <laughs> in the four albums in 12, 18 years or whatever it was. You know what I mean? Like That's kind of like what Kendrick does. Yep, I come out, I hit hard, and then I just lay back, analyze. Watch and... what happens. Watch the, the aftermath <laughs> of this bomb I just dropped. Just came and fucked the room up <laughs> and then left. <laughs> but all right. Now let's go straight to the best beat so far to you. Like that. Like that? Yeah, like that. My best beat, you already know. To me, the best beat that I thought was like really hard when I heard it, which I like like that was first, so that was hard. Mm -hmm. But seven minute drill, I was surprised. And this is not me saying it was the best verse. I I wish Cole went harder on it, but I feel like somebody could tear that beat up. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect it to have like a little bit more of that bounce feel to it. I like seven minute minute drill. Mm -hmm. Like that is we both agree that's the best song, yeah. so we're not gonna even talk about yeah, like, that. Yeah, like yeah. overall song is gonna get the most replays, et cetera. But Rick Ross and Drake, we gotta talk about those two real quick before we get into like the deeper aspects of this episode. It's some analysis to do. And I got a new perspective on J. Cole too. Okay. That people don't wanna hear about Cole, <laughs> but man, hey, it's some interesting shit going on, man. Yeah. I, I, it's some interesting shit. I think this is all intriguing. We ain't never going to Dreamville Fest. Oh man, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about about uh, Drake's drop and give me fifty? I think it was fine, bro. I think it was everything that everybody wanted J Cole's this to be. Um, you know, I in that same episode, our last episode, I was very adamant about if I thought this was a rollout 
I was like, hey, you know, I could see some genius marketer or marketing team being behind this. But Drake's response is when I was like, oh, no, this is real. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is a... This is real beef. This is real animosity. See, you lead into one of my later points, but I want to. I want to. I'm gonna hold on that. I'm gonna hold on that. I thought Drake's response was solid. It's back to back. It's back to back all over again. Just solid. No, it's charged up all. It's over charged again. up. Charged up all over. Again. And I thought charged up was solid. Yeah. It's nothing that I'm excited about, but I thought he did his job. It's his first jab, so like, cool. You took your notes, but people, I feel like people are overhyping it just because he named names, and there was a lot of people that he had to go through. It's like, oh, cool. Like to me, I have expectations of, and with my expectations, I don't get impressed as easily. And I don't mean that like, hey, I got better judgment or something like that than everybody else. It's just the way I look at stuff. For instance, I'll, I I talk with one of my homies about like in NBA players. Like, I don't get that impressed when they dunk because I expect you to be able to dunk. I feel that. Like when they're dunking on somebody, cool. Like now it's different. But like when they do like the, you know, I'm going down the court or it's like an open lane. Cool, you dunked, and I expect you. I know it's some shit that I can't do, most people can't do, but my expectations of you, that's what you're supposed to do, yeah. right? Now, yeah. you dunk on somebody, oh, it's getting crazier. You know what I mean? Like, it just looks nasty. So, Drake, I feel like he checked all his boxes he did, what he's supposed to do, and you can't fault him for it. That was a solid job, mm -hmm. but I I know it wasn't his, his, his haymaker, and I'm expecting a haymaker, so, like, I, I just feel like everybody finally, like, put in their ballot. Well, you know, we know J. Cole pulled out. But, like, every, yeah, well, everybody yeah. is in the ring now. Yeah. Well, we think everybody in the ring because all these random niggas keep on popping up out of nowhere. Like, <laughs> this this Royal Rumble <laughs> is, is, is crazy. Like, that's a whole other – like, that's the beautiful part about this. I have not experienced a randomness like this personally – I don't think ever when it came to, like, hip-hop. It just – this is the part that makes it feel fake. It feels like theatrics – like and I'm not even saying it is. I'm just saying like it doesn't even feel believable. You one Kendrick comes out of nowhere and he's pairing up with Future. You know what I mean? And Metro, longtime collaborators of Drake. Right? Whoa. Okay. Write that in the script. That's interesting. J Cole responds in the first place. Yeah. Crazy. That's interesting. Yeah. J Cole does some historically <laughs> unprecedented, unimaginable shit. Apologizing. Could never imagine that. All right, Drake comes and responds. Wait, hold up. Wait, why is Drake responding to all these random people? Wait, the weekend set? Like, we got everybody talking about Drake. He's going against a whole bunch of people. Rick Ross responds to Drake's track in two hours, right? And I didn't even know Rick Ross had anything to do with anything. Like, it just continues to be this show. And I'm here for it. And like, now... I feel like my I'm I'm a little bit overstimulated because now I'm just expecting I'm looking for like the next drug right like I'm looking for the next random moment <laughs> like I don't even it's like even before Kendrick yeah I want to hear Kendrick but I'm almost like 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 no nah, is somebody else gonna hop up in this thing do we think that there's a world right where Drake J Cole and Kendrick maybe were you know. All on music business worldwide one day, <laughs> and seeing the articles about rap falling off, and as the big three felt like, hey, it's our responsibility to do something here. Like we are the 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 you know the new you know saviors of the culture. We got to step up and, and change the narrative. Is, 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 is there a, a world where that's possible? This is a stimulus package for <laughs> rap right now. It definitely is. Like whether it was planned or not, we can't deny the impact it's having, you know, on the short term interest for sure. Yeah. For sure. I <clears throat> But it was just it was just three months ago the whole industry was like, Oh, it's rap done with and then now biggest song in the world is rap song. Crazy. I'll say this about Drake's <laughs> um Drake's joint too. Like for me it just felt like a Drake song. It didn't feel like a B song. That was my problem with it. That was actually my only problem with it. I thought it was solid. He checked his boxes, but it just felt like a Drake song. Like, Drake's always, like, saying shit about people. Yeah, but him, he's like, saying niggas' names. Yeah, though. he didn't say nobody's name. <laughs> but, like, like to me, that's not that. Like, we we already know what's up at this point, though. Yeah, yeah. Like, if, if he came out of nowhere and did that, like Kendrick he did Kendrick with Control, did, yeah. or, yeah. like, yeah. all right, then, all right, cool. J. Cole, we knew exactly who he was talking. There was no doubt at yeah. that point because what Kendrick had just did. Yeah. Like, and then because of... The way J. Cole approached it, I had a little bit of higher hopes that Drake uh, that Drake was going to come in and just go hard, right? 
but he really just did a, a little bit more of what J. Cole did. Like, hey, bro, like, jab, jab, I'm in here. Like, and you really don't want to awaken the beast. Like, that's basically the approach they took. You know, J. Cole's, I mean, uh, Drake's is just a little bit more well received. That's the way I see it. Now, Rick Ross, because of the surprise factor, I'm going to go with that was my biggest surprise so far. Well, Rick Ross, uh, Ross Band. Well, yeah, my like, biggest problem was the, was the weekend this. I was like, that was, see, it's so many. It's so many. Because, <laughs> like, you know, yeah, the, <laughs> the the weekend, yes. The weekend, well, the weekend bar was the uh, surprise for me because I heard the weekend bar before I heard uh, Drake drop, yeah, same, drop yeah. his joint. Yeah, so same, I was like, yep. wait, why is weekend talking about him right now? Yeah. Knowing their beef, but we never heard him say anything. But I'm going to go with Rick Ross <laughs> just because it was two hours. Drake had um, dropped. It was Saturday. I'm already like chilling, thinking this junk is over with. You know, for now, I got a little rest and I'm just randomly online and I see DJ Academics like it was a stream. Rick Ross responds to Drake and I'm like, what? Yeah. And then, you know, and I liked it. I liked his approach. I know you, you feel a little differently. No, I, I liked it. I just, okay. I just think like, you know, Rick Ross is an OG at this point, man. Yeah. And I just think the music industry OGs are interesting because they never really outgrow the OGness. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and like, it's like every sentence they say. Is this a compliment or an insult? I think it's a compliment. I think I feel like you have to earn the right to move move like that. You know yeah. It's a reason you don't see too many people in the industry that get to move the way that he moves yeah. because a lot of people don't earn the right to move the way he moves. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And Rick Ross's diss was very, very old school by the book diss. He wasn't going for no double entendres. He wasn't going for no crazy metaphors. He was just like, hey, bro, I'm going to just say facts and threaten you. And that's about as old school as it gets when it comes to disses, bro. Like, I'm just going to threaten you a couple good times. And I'm going to say things that when this song ended, if anybody had any doubt, they could go Google it and all the facts would come up. Hey, and, bro. I love that. <laughs> I, I, well, this is what made me lo uh, love it so much because it was straightforward. And it just felt, that was the first record out of all these records that felt more like a beef record to me. Mm -hmm. Right, the other ones felt like rap, yeah. in, in terms of like like I'm kind of throwing a couple bars and that, but that one just felt like, nah, bro, like I don't rock with you, and I'm just being straightforward. It wasn't like trying to be fancy with the bars, and of course we like the bars, right? And like we're talking, but that's the Drake Ken, uh, Kendrick was cold conversation. Like the level of bars and our time. That's what we were trying to expect and judge mm -hmm. over there. Yeah. But in terms of just effectiveness and sticking to landing, Rick Ross had plenty of those. And that's and that's what you want in more of a B style battle. Memorable lines, like a little bit of humor. Cause that this is a big point that I, I was trying to make to people too when they were talking about like, oh, well, like that this goes into the cold joint. So I we might as well get into <laughs> some cold stuff. <sighs> I'm gonna rewind it. I, I I put J Cole into three buckets okay. since this. Okay. Y'all, see, I know a lot of times we get into our marketer brain and y'all don't know the difference between where we're just talking about how we feel and and just talking about the analysis of how this works strategically and the impact on things, right? And I get very good at not just talking about pure emotion. But I'm gonna try to do both and make it clear on what's what. So I got J Cole in three buckets from the, what I just saw. Okay. All right. It was J Cole the angel. Okay. J Cole. The middleman and J. Cole, the devil. These are three possibilities of why he might have pulled out. Okay. Right? Okay. So, number one, J. Cole, the angel. Oh, man, this is a guy who has evolved. I don't even do this, man. Like, we're tearing each other down. This is small stuff in the scope of real life, which is a lot of J. Cole's brand and why a lot of people who, was, uh, who, uh, who favor the fact that he pulled out can respect the fact that he pulled out, right? Yep. And a lot of people like to say, well, J. Cole was telling us that he can bar dudes up and he was the best over the last five years. But if you really analyze it, I think the reason that I also, <laughs> I, I think the reason, no, I think the best thing about this though, or the most interesting thing about it is it really shows the evolution in an artist like we've never seen. It's a crazy case study to me. And I'm just a super curious individual. So yes, I was highly disappointed, etc. But the reason I wasn't hard on Cole, because people were saying stuff like, oh, you can't be the uh, GOAT or uh, my, my, my guy Locksmith was like, where's the accountability? To me, when he made this decision, he knew 
that he took his name out the race. Yeah. Like, so to me, like, that is the accountability. Like, yep, I'm not in the game anymore. Yep, I've changed. And yep, I can't be seen in this. And he knew the sacrifice, which probably sucked on his side. To, it wasn't an easy decision. But, but like, since he said, hey, this ain't for him, I was just like, all right, cool. And now I'm just analyzing it from the 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 groundbreaking moment it is. That's why I ain't have no animosity. If dude say he don't want to do it, hey, man, all right, you're not built like that. Or, cool, keep moving. That's how I kind of uh, analyze it. So that's probably why I wasn't going as hard as people w- w- were on that side. But check this out. So cool, that's one side of it. That's the angel. Second, there's the middleman. This is, this is something in- interesting. All right, I haven't heard people talk about it enough. J. Cole, I'm the friendly guy. I'm the middleman. I'm Switzerland. I'm neutral. Mm-hmm. He pulled out, yeah, they want to see blood. If you think about it, as this is continued, is this a battle for a neutral nigga? No. Is this a, is this a space for just who's the best at rapping? Yeah. This is not that type of time. Everybody else in this battle don't like each other. Yeah, it's very clear. <laughs> yeah, very like, clear so I don't know, maybe, because yeah. we know how the industry is. You hear tracks, you know what else is out there. So maybe he knew what was coming. I'm not saying I'm not capable. I'm just like seeing these three angles of why he could have pulled out. I got another one that's a left field one, but it might be something else. But like, if you really look at it, it's just like, even if, even if he did stay in it and he wasn't thinking this way, let's just say he, this is not... It would be hard for him to make sense in this space. Yeah, it would. Yeah. Like after he was like, you just trying to outbar people, and they really like hating on yeah. each other. Niggas dropping facts and yeah, and real events. <laughs> so your stuff not gonna hit like that. Yeah. Just to be real, and you're like, oh well, I don't want to go, but so far because this is my homie. So it's like, eh, yeah, get on out of here. I'm kind of glad. Just get on out of here, so we don't even have to think about it that way. Yeah, and it's like, and if J Cole is you know really the homebody that he's spent years trying to make us believe that he is. And he probably ain't even got the tea like that to be coming up with the same level of bars they come. He probably don't know shit. You know what yeah, I'm that's, not, like that? that's not his game. He's yeah. not playing a petty thing. He in his own world. But answer this question for me or y'all address this point for me. All of y'all out here. Because I, I feel like there's a misnomer when it comes to like this, who's the best in rapping and how we judge that and what competition looks like. Mm-hmm. People are like, this is just a friendly competition. Nobody's going to die. Da, 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 right? Cool. I feel like battle rap does that good. This is a different arena. It's hard to like not bring and get in personal stuff in this arena. So we're not when we're outside the battle rap arena where it's a little bit more controlled and contained. It really only goes with two ways. When you're having this type of battle, it's really a roast battle. Mm -hmm. Really. It's not really like, oh, who could just like rap for the sake of rap. It's really who can roast the best and make it stick. Yep. It's not like pure who's the best rapper, yep. right? And then because of that, it often gets really personal. It's usually personal. Yep. Matter of fact, it's usually fueled first from actual beef, not we're just doing this friendly. Yep. So that's one. And then the only other way that you could truly have a, hey, this is a competition and it's a friendly competition, I feel like, and who's the best rapper, is if we were doing a joint song, a joint project, and we're just trying to out rap each other in yeah. the songs, yeah. not going against each other. So if J. Cole and Kendrick, I don't ever see Drake, but like like all of them doing it together. But like like let's say if there was a Kendrick Cole album, who's out rapping each other, who kill each other in the songs? Mm-hmm. That's how we say who's the better rapper between uh, them two. It's not a uh, hey, I'm gonna do the roast battle that style of a beef style of rap. That just doesn't add up to me. Yeah, and like I said, and it's, it's just it just wouldn't be on brand, man. Like the people that it's on brand for are the people that are still in the race. <laughs> for sure, for sure. <laughs> Let me bring in the last one because I want I want to get up off of cold, but I just say these things because I think they're interesting. Just analyze, uh, an, analyzing these things, it's funny. It just it's funny to me. What if? What if? Right? Because of where things are going, this is where I get into. I said J Cole the angel. J. Cole the middleman. Hey, I'm Switzerland, I'm neutral. But then it's J. Cole the demon. What if J. Cole's a demon out here on these streets? And he knows that this battle gonna get messy. Yeah. And these dudes might start calling out all kind of stuff that's not on brand for Cole. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get what you're saying, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> or, like, 
you know, it can be some, hey, man, you out here cheating on your wife, da, 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 whatever. Kids in other countries. You know what I mean? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? It was like, dang. It's like, so then when you talk about messing up my piece, he probably at night thinking like, damn, bro, Drake know what we did when we were in, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> he was like, damn, I know these bars might might come. So let me get up, get up out of here before they start revealing that dirty laundry and mess up the piece in my real life. <laughs> Maybe he was like he might have been speaking speaking in uh you know in uh in, in messages that that people didn't yet understand. He might just say, Hey, white flag, bro, y'all know what y'all y'all can say. Don't say it, please, bro. And and got himself up out of there. I remember uh there was a Republican who's a black man black man. Herman Cain, he was running for president. Mm -hmm. And he pulled out when shit got too hot. Yeah. They started getting real personal, getting the hit into his life. He was like, man, this drug ain't worth it, bro. Yeah. It's, so that's, I'm saying, like, maybe a little bit of that is there. We just don't know. It. And he just, like, going to let the narrative go as it is. Because you know how it goes. Hey, that narrative's better than them knowing the truth. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Like, I, I, you, hearing you said it out loud, I, I agree with the middleman and the, the devil as, aspect. Because there is that part of the industry, right, where you always hear, you know, people are human. Like, they do things. You just don't know the severity of what they've done until it, you know, comes to life. They could be, you know what I'm saying, have, have been stealing beats when they was coming up. <laughs> they could have been, you know, yeah. full out Diddy, bro. Like, yeah. and, and everything in between. And, yeah. you know, the, I'm sure the last thing that J. Cole will want is for us to learn something that feels like he's <laughs> closer to the other side of the spectrum or anything like that. And then just... I mean, I still stand on the same point I made last episode, man. I think that, and now a little bit of what you just said, I think that, yes, initially Cole hopped in, oh, it's cool, it's for the sport. Hey, this is looking like it's getting real, you know, way more real than I expected to be. And if I take the route that it, this is looked like it's going down, I'm going to be just so far outside of myself. Mm. And then now you have to think, because everybody else getting as deep into it as they have been, to me, makes sense on certain levels, right? Some of these artists got projects coming out. Mm -hmm. Some of these artists just dropped songs recently. Some of these artists haven't been in, you know, the the, the pop culture headlines in a long time. Like, there's a yeah. lot of different incentives for some of the artists that have jumped in to make themselves a part of this conversation. Cole don't really get that. Like, he's like, I'm already in the pop culture conversation because I'm coming off with number one song. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, um... I mean, he got a project coming out, but it's probably so far from when this moment happened, like he probably don't see it yep. impacting him the way it's gonna impact everybody else. So then it's like you said, is this worth it for me outside of a cool conversation for a week? And, I, and if I'm J. Cole, yeah, the answer no. You know what I'm saying? For real, for real, like. Hey man, you're not hip hop, bro. Hey man. You're not rap. <laughs> but, and that goes back to the other part about yeah. being on brand. J. Yeah. Cole's new brand, as of, I won't say new, new, but, you know, recent as the last two or three years is, hey, I don't care about all these industry accolades. I don't care about all these materialistic things or these materialistic accolades. And being number one in rap is the number one music material, like, you know, materialistic accolade. That's, <laughs> and that's, that's the last thing I'll say on him. Like, again, as people say, Yes, he's said all this stuff about being the best. He is walk, he's been a walking contradiction for about five years yeah, where, where he's evolved and started to say he doesn't care about none of that stuff. But out of habit, he kept on putting out those bars. I think he's been struggling. And if you look at what he said, he said, yes. I got tested for the first time. And he actually act, decide, oh, dang it. Do I really want to be this guy? Because now I got to sacrifice for real. I could say I'm sacrificing and get all the, he got all the sweet shit of like this little um, Bob Marley-ish brand that he's building out. Yeah. You get yep. what I'm saying? He was yep. getting all them yep. sweet accolades. Yep. But now, oh, if you want to stand on it for real, you got to lose something. That was the first time he actually had, stood, had something to, he stood to lose for it. So, you know, Interesting stuff right there, but I and I think again it's a legit case study on, on on the cold stuff. But before we get into the biggest winners so far, I want to give a shout out to the side stories. We talking about the side quest of well, side quest. What is it? Everybody that Drake is talking about. We 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 talked about that. Cool. But there's side quest to the side quest. Complete side storylines that have been popping up in hip hop. Did you not catch at the same time that we're dealing with all this, 
We got Quavo versus Chris Brown. Yes. <laughs> Very under the radar beef right now, but under radar beef. Under radar beef That's right. above under radar beef. Yeah, in any yeah. normal climate, that would get a lot more attention. Yeah. It's just that Kendrick Dunn dropped the bomb and everybody's yeah. reacting. Yeah. Then we got the Wale and Meek Mill back at it. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that too. See? Yeah. Damn, it was last week. That's crazy. This is this is things are rolling, man. <laughs> Hip hop is having a time right now, and this is the part that doesn't make it feel real because it's just so much at once versus what we're used to. It's not just a Kendrick versus Drake or whatever. It's like all right, everybody just popping up at once. I'm with it though, and this is where I get to my biggest winner. My biggest winner right now, and I'll tell you why. You got to back yours up. <laughs> Mine is Rick Ross. Okay, I thought you were about to say the culture or something. I knew you were about to take. No, nah, man, okay, I'm bad. never, man. Nah, my bad, man. I just, I'm never, going, answer, I'm never going. I'm never going to the culture. The culture <laughs> is always going to win, but the culture is like the block. The culture don't really care about you, man. You ain't doing stuff for the culture. The culture is always going to find a way to, 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 to navigate that, man. The reason I say Rick Ross so far mm. is just because Rick Ross has attention that just wasn't on him. Yeah, facts. He used the moment. He really doesn't have much to lose or anything to lose like that because people don't have much expectation for him. A lot of people don't necessarily want to hear from him, but the people who appreciate good rap and just good beef and this kind of action, they're going to appreciate it. And he just leveraged a moment and put his name in the hat and got attention. And he's going to know how to flip that. So I say kudos to Rick Ross so far because, hey, man. You know, I respect I respect the move outside of the the bars and everything. Of course, like he did solid on 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 the song. We can get deeper into that. Yeah, and he got a car show coming up. So if this beef drag out long enough. He definitely doing something at the car show. And like you said, Rick 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 Ross comes from the old school mentality of beefing, bro. It's real yeah. facts. Yeah, and I'm gonna fuck with you in real life. See, and that, that's the funny <laughs> part, bro, because you keep saying. <laughs> Real facts, but this, but it's so true because so many of these, <laughs> <laughs> so many of these songs, where people are like, ooh, they just appreciate, you know, the the entertaining lie, yeah. even though it's not a fact. Oh, the hype, the other entertaining you know hype, I mean? yeah. Rick yeah. Ross is like, hey, bro, anytime somebody put an audio recording from an interview or mm-hmm. just some talk you did on something, that's what I'm like. That, I told you the Rick Ross song when I was like, oh no, this is a real beef. Like this yeah. is a, this isn't a marketer, bro. Yeah. Like, that nigga went and pulled receipts and was that's- like. Hey, Hey, little bro, you were just bigging me up. And in yeah. your words, I'm your inspiration. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. the reason X, Y, Z. And then here you are today saying what you're saying, which is the route I do like that Rick Ross is taking. Rick Ross isn't trying to play the accolade game. Yep. He's not trying to play the numbers game. He's not trying to play the relevancy game. Yep. He's playing the respect game. Yep. Yo, don't disrespect me as if I'm not an artist that you weren't just mm-hmm. bigging up for yeah. 60, 70% yeah. of your career. Yeah, F your little pop fans yeah. who really don't know what this is about in the yep. first place. Yep. It's like, you know what this is about. Yeah, he even said in his song, man, like, you know, I'm the reason you got your face out. You hopped on, you hopped on my song saying you gave me a hit, but what you're not talking about is that the cultural look it gave you at the time, which Ooh. is something that, like, you know, like you said, new fans wouldn't understand or even care enough to go back and research Man. that. But it's like, if you were there and you saw it and you hear that bar, you're like, yeah, it's true. It's a good point. That's that's why I don't want to, <laughs> that's definitely why I don't want to hear the Drake stimulus package when it comes to a lot of these guys. Because what had a bigger impact? Drake doing a feature with these guys or a lot of these artists that Drake used to get credibility in the culture in the first place. If Drake didn't come through with the Waynes and move with the the Rosses and do mm-hmm. features and, and, and get seen around a lot of these guys, he wouldn't have had the cultural respect. A lot of these American black street type artists were what Drake used to insert himself in the culture. Yeah. So then to turn around, you know, and then, oh yeah, you using me. Eh, there, it it, it kind of play starts to play into some of the things that Rick Ross was saying. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't want to get into the racy stuff. Oh uh, uh, yeah, but yeah, but like, yeah. It's, it's starting to lean into that narrative. Well, I, I do agree because it is that's like you know you're saying it about this situation in hindsight, and in 2024 moving forward, what you're saying, yes, makes sense. I gave you your first yeah. couple hits, but like if you take it back to the time of when it happened, it's like. It's a win-win situation. I got my first hit. You got the cultural validation that you needed. Mm-hmm. We we won here now because I can imagine that you know in Drake's head, even if the song 
didn't go crazy, he would have still got the validation. So in his head, it was a win either way. I'm pretty sure it becoming a hit was like a happy surprise. For both yeah, don't, that's no. the kind of stuff that, for that's for people who don't know their value or whatever. Mm-hmm. Rick Ross knew his value in that situation. Mm-hmm. And that's why a lot of artists end up getting flipped and, and taken advantage of. You gotta understand your value beyond just, ooh, who's bigger, who's these mm-hmm. accolades? Cause there's, there's so many ways to bust down value. I remember when we did um, the talk with Lil Ru- Lil Russell, and he was not just talking about signing to a label and what that looks like on paper, right? And, to, and doing a good deal from that standpoint, does the money line up with my streams and my merch and my audience and my fan base? He's talked about the value of him as a face and a brand on the label mm-hmm. and how you're able to flip him into signing other artists yep. that will sign just because of Russell's on that label, yep. right? Yep. That's truly understanding the value and a lot of people don't think about it on that level and strategic, so they just go to, oh, look at this guy, he has one number ones. Oh, look at this guy, he has, you know, the, the Grammys and all that stuff. Of course, I don't even wanna say we respect and appreciate it because we really don't. Like, we, we bring it up when it's convenient, but then Drake himself, has shitted on the charts and Grammys and things like that. Jay Z and so many rappers. There's a huge history of artists and us talking about the disrespect we have for the Grammys or them not respecting us. So we can't also use that as you know a token of our status when it comes to these battles. Not with inside the culture. You can't do that. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that because then it's, it's a confusing message to your audience. It shows the higher side of the industry, like they they basically like, Oh yeah, we knew that nigga was Captain Bro. Like you look at you <laughs> look at you right back over here. Yeah. Smacking him in the face with your Grammy, you know what I'm saying? And and using that as your bar. So I agree, man. That's why I think like that's what's so interesting about this beef is like it's interesting to say see who's staying on brand and who's kinda getting off brand a little bit. Mm. Which I think is and, and and I think it's also reigniting parts of people's brands you forgot about. Like Rick Ross and this whole comedy side of him, bro. I forgot how funny he was until, you right. know what I'm saying? This, this, this last is great. Two, three days, like. what, what, what did I tell you, bro? I'm like, <laughs> none of these guys are gonna be able to deal with Rick Ross on the social media tip. He's able to go, if they were like beefing, baby, he's able to go full, full on, you know, like, yeah, comedy, mm-hmm. j- just, hey, I'm around the city and I'm talking about you. Oh, look at this person, they look like you, or this person said they know, like just saying random stuff, walking in his backyard, just talking. And that's a different type of beef muscle, right? Like, like you know, like we were talking about, like yeah. Yeah, he went against Fifty Cent. That, that's that's a huge training ground, yeah, you know, because because yeah. Fifty can beef <laughs> on track and off the track and in the streets, right? So, yeah, Drake is gonna have to keep it on. You know what I mean? Kendrick, I haven't seen any of them. Maybe they got it in them, but I haven't seen any of them be able to stand up to that side of the game. And that's gonna help Rick Ross again. That's yeah. what makes him a winner. Cause he's gonna be able to outside the music, just hop on social media, figure out how to flip moments and like just talk. Yeah, and that's what I meant to say earlier. Cause actually you just brought up a good point too, right? You're right. I think this, like I think all of them, if I can remember correctly, all the artists involved have played the comedy card in terms of them attacking someone. Mm-hmm. But I think for, I guess a lot of it was really just Drake. But like, so Drake has done it, right? Drake has done it a bunch of times. But I think this mm-hmm. is probably the first time Drake has been on the other end of it. And you said something earlier, right? Where you was like, yo, Rick Ross's part seems like it's sticking a lot more, you know, which I think is interesting considering it seems like the song isn't as big as the other songs or is or is yeah. going to get as big as the others. And I, I wouldn't say I think. The reason that it's sticking more than others is because Rick Ross, if you go look right now, he's the only one on socials kind of like driving it forward, but he's making memes, he's making yep. jokes, he's in comments. Sound bites. You know what I'm saying? Like he's, he all over it, but like you said, he, like, he immediately just like flipped the playbook open and, and got to work, you know what I'm saying? Whereas like everybody else said they piece and shut the fuck up. You know what yep. I'm saying? Like his first quarter, yep. like all that. Yeah, like, I'm saying, bro. Like Rick Ross is like, I'm, and I'm telling you, bro, because that car show coming up, bro. He like, it's like you said earlier, bro. He probably was like, hey, bro, I just got blessed with millions of dollars of free promo and marketing. I'm about to ride this shit to the wheels fall off. And I got an event coming up that I can monetize it with. So I agree, man. Like I think before today, I would have said Metro Boomin is the biggest winner. Really? It, yeah. Why? Because at the end of the day, he making all this money back off all of it, bro. He ain't got to say nothing. He ain't got to, I mean, he going to catch strays. But like at the end of the day, man, Metro Pocket's filling up no matter where this shit go. 
So I think that's and I hate to take it. I hate to take it to that W, man. I know it's what? not a it's not a culturally significant W, what? but it is a W nonetheless, man. Okay. But now I, th- I think I do give it a rip rock. So like you're right, bro. It's like no one expected him to be a part of it. Millions of dollars of free marketing promo. And he probably gonna be the first one to 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 cap on it because he got something coming up pretty soon. Oh, Unless one of them one of these well, I guess Drake is on tour, so you could tank it. But the tickets were sold before it happened. Yeah, so yeah, that, that it's not, it's not really new yeah. for yeah. him. Uh, but uh, yeah, Metro prop winning off all of it. Okay, he got the joint with you know, it got yeah, like one, like that. Pub okay, going man. crazy. Club going crazy. Pub. Oh pub. Oh. Yeah. Like his publishing pub Public. going crazy. I was about to say there's a song called Pub <laughs> going crazy in hip hop. We, we, when we start doing pubs in hip hop, all right, cool. <laughs> publishing is going crazy. Okay, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Metro then being talked about a lot more. Yeah. You know Any of Drake's catalog going up? Yep. It's, 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 well, a lot of Drake's catalog going up is, is okay. That's Metro. That's what I'm saying, man. Like, so mm. I, I think I got to give it give it Metro, man. Because like, no matter mm. how good or bad it goes. Yeah, he eating right now for that shit. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know because people people really like that shut your ass up and make some drums and or see, whatever bar. And see, if I'm Metro, I'm sampling that and doing something with it. Because yeah. that nigga said my name, so you can't stop me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm, like, making, I'm actually making some drums. Yeah, and exactly. Making, going, going it's going to be my time. I'm going to cut out the shut your bitch ass up part, and it's going to just say Metro booming. Go make some drums and shit like that, and that's gonna be my my next tag for like my next three singles, bro. And he can't do nothing about it. And I'm gonna put that shit on a, on the next song when niggas dissing you. So this is what I was doing. <laughs> so I was gonna ask about wild cards. I we had wild card moments already so far. Yeah. Abel popped out of nowhere. Yeah. Weekend for y'all who ASAP, forget, you know, ASAP Rocky, the ASAP Rocky straight. Yeah, we still got to go down the list of everybody who has been named in this situation. Um, and then Rick Ross popped out of nowhere. Um, but if I'm thinking wild card, some interesting thing to happen, maybe Metro, like <laughs> producing everybody's beef tracks. That'd be fun. Like offering up, That'd be <laughs> like, hey, bro, who need a beef track versus Drake? I'm giving you a free, yeah. and then yeah. you know that'd be fun. That'd be know. a grab, dude, actually, because that'd be. I mean, for real, if if everybody start deciding to air their their grievances out, it's probably at least twenty songs coming out right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, interesting. Uh, maybe he'll do it. Maybe this man to get on TikTok do a Drake beef open burst. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be crazy, actually. Oh, people would hate him so bad for that. This is so anti hip hop. Oh man, this is. I mean, this is very clear that <laughs> the way this is happening can only happen in this generation of hip hop. Yeah, the technology, the. The sentiment, yep. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. Yep. Of uh, Jacob better do what he did or whatever. You know, the social media elements is is very interesting to watch. But I want to get your wild card before we get out of here. Now I'm gonna make sure we didn't miss anything. That who do I think is gonna be a wild card in all of this? Yeah, a wild card moment. Like, if do you think something interesting will happen? Whether it's somebody new gonna pop into the game or somebody who's already in it is gonna do something that other people aren't expecting. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a ladder, man. Last time Drake was beefing, we got we we learned he had a baby. You know what I'm saying? So mm. I'm assuming you, you know think it's gonna be a big fact that pops out that nobody yes. knows. Hundred percent, bro. People mm. love leaking Drake information, bro. Like it's mm. like, bro, having a, a fact about Drake that ain't hit the internet yet, bro. It's like sitting on it's sitting, like sitting on piles of gold, bro. Like, it's like it, an NFT. Exactly, bro. You just you just <laughs> waiting for it to mature enough. It's for you to go ahead and cash out on it. Yeah, and this is the perfect yeah. time to cash out. Yeah. So I think something like that's gonna happen. I think that I think depending on how deep it goes in terms of like media involvement, like who decides that like who that's non musical that decides to pick a side. But I could see um I think somebody from the OVO camp that we wouldn't expect to turn on Drake is gonna turn on Drake. I, I'm I'm willing to bet there's some some frustrated people on the inside that's been looking for an out, you know what I'm saying? Or a socially acceptable out, you know what I'm saying? Like something big enough to where people would be on your side for wanting to leave the situation. Mm. I think something like that's gonna happen. I don't know who, cause everybody on OVO surface level seems happy right now. But you know, I also, We'll have assumed that surface level, Rick Ross and Drake were cool. So, you know, apparently surface level ain't surface leveling right now. You know what I'm saying? Shit ain't mm-hmm. accurate right now. But I think yeah. I think it's gonna be somebody from Drake's camp 
is going to come out and start leaking some crazy information. And we're going to learn that, like, I don't know, he really, like, 62 or, like, he really a white man or something. But it's going to be something crazy, bro. This shit going to be wild. <sighs> yeah. Unprecedented times. Or, Unprecedented or. times. I don't, I just don't know if I want to say that. Because I, because I want the video to get demonetized. But I think, what I oh. think they're going to lean, because Drake oh. has one Achilles heels right now. Okay, interesting. And, sure, sure, you don't want to do a team huddle? And like, what you talking no, about? Trying, I'm, 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 trying, I'm, trying, I'm trying to think how I'm say it. Drake's Achilles heels right now, socially, is, I'll just say this, the fact that he likes to hang around people significantly younger than him. Oh, interesting. You know what I'm saying? That is and, interesting. And that reminds me of the of a sneaky <laughs> biggest winner in all of this. Did he? Oh, because the attention got pushed off him? <laughs> well, we not talking about it in the same level. You know what I mean? Them, that, them, that news cycle, the news cycle. <laughs> Things that switched up. I will say this too, man. I think that, you know, knock on wood, if everybody involved in this beef can make it to the other end of the beef with no one getting hurt. This would literally be the most historic moment in, in rap because now it never will we have seen artists of this magnitude beef with each other and no one come out dead. Now I think it'll be fine if we can make it there. You know, knock on wood. If we can make it there, that'd be fine. That'd be a great no step one, for the culture. That, that happened with Jay and Nas. Nobody died in that. That we know about. You know, that was the nineties, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Shit was different back then, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> but I know what I, I, know, I know what you mean, though. This level of energy, this amount of energy. Rick Ross really did have me looking at Drake's nose, though. Me too, bro. I'm saying, I was, I was like, looking... did I miss something? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, I look the same to me. I'm like, but I don't know, man. That's a random diss, bro. Like, the, this was like, you don't just make that kind of thing up, <laughs> see? And that's where we talking about some winner shit, bro. Because again, just like Ether, a lot of stuff was like. Some elementary <laughs> school like dissing, but it was also funny and it was great. Mm -hmm. It was put together well. I'm not saying I love to eat for, eat for those of y'all, yeah, but like that. now in the future, a lot of times I'm just looking at Drake <laughs> and I'll probably be thinking about the Rick Ross boy uh, uh, first without even thinking about it, not trying. It's like, dang, his nose. Mm. Mm, maybe he got some makeup on. He got some contouring going on. I don't know, bro. Like, like who knows? Who knows? You know, like so. Bars that stick are underrated. Yeah, bro. Bars that stick and songs that stick. Back to back was mm -hmm. was one of those. That was a whole song that st stuck stuck with some bars within it that stuck. The Twitter fingers is still to this day getting brought up. Yeah. Right, it's like T Tupac hitting him up. That was a song that that stuck. Bars that stick like that. They they they. They get in your head, man. So I don't know. I'm interested to see what else happens. And I'm kind of, I'm trying not to be, I'm not, I'm trying not to have my expectations so high because it gave me so many things that I wasn't expecting. And now I don't want to create expectations and then be disappointed. I, I'm happy just like riding to see where it go. And then, you know. And I agree, bro. And moving that way. This shit like a rap Medea play. That's what it feels like. Yo, bro. what? Just, just twists and turns around every corner. <laughs> this is it, you know <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Unexpected man. characters out of every. <laughs> like, I literally so expect for us to finish on this podcast and I'm going to pick my phone up and, and something new going to come. I really, I, I wake up every morning and that's the first thing I'm going to like, oh, let me see if any new updates on, came out on the case. Who who jumping in the ring today? Oh, damn. It's such and such. I really feel like that, bro. And it's like, I literally can't remember the last time I paid this much attention to this many people in music at yeah. one time. We'll see if they let that, <laughs> that rap Medea play rock, bro. That <laughs> You a wild one for that one, but we don't got time to get into it. This is yet another episode of Brad. No Labels Necessary. I'm Brad Van Shaw. And I'm Corey. We out. Peace. <laughs> Appreciate you for watching. If you like content like this, you'll love seeing our music marketing strategies that we use as an agency to actually blow up artists to millions and even billions of streams that are available for free at nolabelsnecessary.com. And the cool part about it that's going to really make you love it is we don't have to be all entertaining and add all this fluff just to get some views that we do on YouTube. We get straight to the information. There's play by play and courses that give you a breakdown of every step that you should do to get success. And you have the ability to have communication with us. We get on live talks, a lot of cool things for members, and it's free 
just to hop in. So check it out right now at nolabelsnecessary.com.